The question I get a lot is, what is the difference between first degree murder and second degree murder, and then involuntary manslaughter, voluntary manslaughter, what's this business about? I like to talk about things that aren't necessarily related to business law, simply because I think they're important for people to know. So, I wanna cover the murder manslaughter question. Let's start with first degree murder. The central part of murder is intent. What is your intention? And when we're talking about first degree murder, we're talking about a term called malice of forethought. That you have the intent to kill someone or cause great bodily harm. So I think we have a fairly natural idea of what this is. You kill someone, you intended to kill someone, that is first degree murder. Or if, let's say, I wanna shank someone with a knife just to teach them a lesson. Well, I don't intend to kill them, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure they feel it, right? And when I knife them, uh, I hit their spleen and they end up dying days later. That is still first degree murder because I've caused great bodily harm. Maybe I didn't intend to kill, but I had this malice of forethought. I wanted to cause really intentional destruction to someone. So what's second degree murder? How is that different? Second degree murder involves reckless abandonment. Okay, We don't intend to kill someone, but we have such wanton disregard for life that uh, when someone dies, it is so grossly reckless that it's beyond anything that's reasonable. Let's say we're street racing and I kill someone in another car. And even though I wasn't intending to kill someone, I have recklessly abandoned the laws and limitations on our streets. So we, we do second degree murder when you don't intend to kill someone, but it's so reckless, it's beyond anything that's reasonable. Then after these first and second degree murder, we get into manslaughter. We have two types of manslaughter. We have voluntary manslaughter and involuntary manslaughter. What's the difference here? Again, there's a bit of intention, there's a bit of emotion in this. With voluntary manslaughter, you intend to kill someone, but it's in a situation where you are so emotionally overcome that it's almost a instinct to kill them. The classic example is that a man walks in on his wife committing adultery and in the heat of the moment he kills that person she's committing adultery with. These are moment of passion crimes. You do not have a cooling off period. Your instinct, your gut reaction is to kill this individual. So it has to be a situation where you are so overcome with emotion that you had no chance to think about your actions. It's a fairly rare circumstance. It does happen, but it's fairly rare to have a voluntary manslaughter case. Now, involuntary manslaughter is where we have criminal negligence. All right. So we'll talk about negligence when we get into our section on torts, but I think we have an idea of when somebody's negligent, they've acted negligently. We have civil negligence cases. This is where we have criminal negligence. You are doing something that's negligent and someone dies. So you're driving your car, you accidentally run a red light, you kill someone in another car, that is criminal negligence, that's involuntary manslaughter. We're street racing. You run a red light intentionally to try to beat someone to the finish line and you kill someone in another car, that would be second degree murder. If you're just driving, uh, your normal drive and you get into a car accident, it's usually involuntary manslaughter. Murder is all about intention. It's all about the state of mind of the person who committed the crime. A couple famous examples of the murder versus manslaughter debate. Perhaps you remember the George Zimmerman trial. George Zimmerman was the neighborhood watch individual who was following a young man and they got into an altercation and the young man was killed. The prosecutor was debating whether to bring second degree murder or manslaughter and ask for second degree murder primarily. The big debate is whether this was a criminal negligence for manslaughter or whether it was a, a reckless abandon for second degree murder. There was a lot of criticism after that case that perhaps the prosecutor should have just brought the manslaughter case because they lost the second degree murder reckless abandonment. This is a tough call in some cases. You don't know how a jury is going to respond to the facts, but probably there would have been a much better chance of getting some kind of um, conviction against George Zimmerman if they would have brought a manslaughter case. 
The second famous case is Conrad Murray. Remember the doctor who was Michael Jackson's private physician? Conrad Murray was giving Michael Jackson propofol to help him fall asleep. Again, the question became whether this is second degree murder, was it reckless abandonment of what a physician should be doing of the Hippocratic Oath, or was it simple negligence? He was trying to help him sleep and he just gave too much or wasn't watching close enough to Michael Jackson's vitals and Michael Jackson passed away on this propofol drug. So the question again was, was this second degree murder or was it manslaughter? Hope that clears up the difference between first degree murder, second degree murder, and manslaughter.